Like it's about the four years. It's every four years, you almost get a new life. So I'm sitting here with my guy, Dion Cole, nominated for an Emmy, all right? All right, he's a, he's a comedian, actor, and writer. I was shooting one day Shark Tank with Jeff Foxworthy, and he said something to me fascinating. He said, you know, as a comedian, it's probably one of the hardest jobs in the world because you got to earn every single laugh. you got to earn every single thing. And, you know, if Michael Jackson was alive today, he could sing Beat It for the next hundred years and everybody's going to sing beat it with him. Once I tell a joke, it's over. I got to earn, uh, you know, the laughter from each joke over the course of an hour or whatever the case is. And then I can never tell that joke again. Everybody thinks they can write. Everybody thinks they can tell a joke. Everybody thinks they can sing. So you don't have an actual commodity that is tangible and you can feel. I have a shirt, you can at least tell that it costs five, 10 or $20 to make. And if you don't want it, I can discount it or sell it someplace else. If you don't get the gig, I don't, I don't know how you discount it or whatever, they, whatever the case is. And there's a million other people that think they can do the same exact thing. Yeah. So now you got to face all these challenges, get rejected a million times, and still try to find a way to feed your family. Yeah. So I just want to set that up for everybody who thinks that it's just cool to get on stage and sing, dance, and or, you know, make a joke. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. I wasn't funny. It was just my outlook on things, the way I looked at things. If somebody tripped and fell in front of me and my friends, everybody be laughing. I'll be the only person like, why did they fall? Let's investigate why they <laughs> fell and go into depth about uh, why they fell. Right. Like that would be me all the time with everything. And so that comedy led to me starting to be in a, in a world of comedy that really didn't fit, but I was a black comic and it was different and it was unique. Ended up getting on Def Jam and... Oh, the Def Jam Comedy Jam. Def Comedy Jam, yeah. I went on TV show and then I went on tour. Only had 14 minutes. I did seven minutes on Def Jam, meaning I had another seven left. I went on tour and I was getting booed, like, left and right, or wasn't nobody laughing. Like, I think I did, like, four cities, and then they sent me home. I remember sitting in the airport with my Def Jam hat and jacket, just sitting there, like humiliated. Mm -hmm. What gave you the confidence to even apply to do stand-up anywhere? I think it was the fact, well, me first, when I first started, it wasn't even me. It was a friend of mine who bet me $50. He was like, something happened and he was like, dude, you should do stand-up. Like, you are, you're so twisted. Like, you should do stand-up. And I was like, I ain't doing no stand-up because I just yeah. went into that. Plus, I was into some other, like, like ill shit. And so I didn't want that kind of attention on me. And he was like, man, I bet you $50. And I went on stage and I remember getting a standing ovation that first time off of five minutes that I did and knew that my life changed. But I still didn't like the attention. I didn't like being on stage because of all the other shit that I was into. Uh -huh. But it, it created this fantastic bit that I still do to this day, which is I, I take this notepad on stage with me and I like do my jokes from this notepad. But uh -huh. that actually came from a condition that I was having at the time. I was so scared on stage and so paranoid that I would just read the jokes off the paper and people would laugh because I would just go, yo, I gotta do these jokes and I gotta go. Right. <laughs> and I would read these jokes and people would laugh and they would laugh and they'd laugh and I'd go, all right, I'm out of here. And then I would leave. I wouldn't even rememorize them. I would just write them down and then go. Are you a CEO that knows that you've done everything to master your craft? Now you need to take your personal brand to the next level. Well, I love working one-on-one -on -one with game-changing CEOs. And if you're interested, reach out. Go to workwithashark.com and fill out the form. Now, back to the video. Then what was the allure or the passion or drive to keep doing it? You know, you're somebody who didn't like the public you know, scene, you're paranoid. The, the fear. Was it that you were paying the bills off of it? Was it no, that it was it, it was that. it was a curiosity? What was going on? It was it was the it was the feel. Comedy has a feel that's very unique. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. Sex, money, it's nothing like this feel to go into a room and stand on the stage with a microphone and say what you think. And, and, and get it across to a room full of people that you've never seen before. And to get them to go, yeah, we get that. I'm thinking, you get on stage, everybody's sitting there with their mouth open like this, yeah. like hurry up and make me laugh, mm -hmm. and then people start booing you. 
But that's but that's but see that's how great the feeling is. The feeling is so great that you will risk being booed by hundreds of thousands of ten people, whatever. You you will risk that in order to chase that feeling. That's how great that feeling is. I don't think there's any difference in that in business. You can make a product and, a cat and or something, you send it out to everybody, and you think that they have, uh, you know, they, they're going to understand. They send it back and say it sucks. Mm -hmm. right? and, they, and you're like, maybe you didn't get it, but I'm telling you, I can make you feel good with this, <laughs> with this product, right, with this lotion, right, right. with this cake, right, with this T-shirt. Right, right, right. No, it's, it's the same thing, but this feeling is like, it's, 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 I, I can't even really describe it. It's like, it's almost like a conquering type thing in a sense. And it also gives you this sense of accomplishment as well as helping people. You, you Man, you wouldn't believe how many people in hospital beds, prisons, that came up to me and told me that, yo, they seen me on TV and my joke helped them. It's people that told me that a family member then died and they just wanted to laugh and be happy until they until their last like days. Be on the road, door slamming your face, not knowing if you're gonna be able to, you know, pay the rent the next mm -hmm. day. I mean, it didn't sound like you, you were a trust fund baby. No. Nah. You know, <laughs> what did you do during that time? Cause how long was that? How long was this stretch of a period of time since you started in comedy and today? This October would be 26 years. What happened in those times when it got dark, when you were put back on a plane from in the middle of Def Jam tour, you were at a crappy ass hotel mm -hmm. and then you got booed, mm -hmm. right? And, and you were, you know, did you ever question why are you doing this? And, and, and what made you keep going for 26 years with no promise of anything and then probably the first or 80% of that time? Right. It's the fantasy of what could, what could be looking at other people's career and seeing what they did and, and looking at their trials and tribulations and then looking at mine and going, it's not that bad. You know, Bernie Mac used to take the train from Chicago to LA to do a show. You gotta second guess yourself to say, maybe he was just funnier than me or like a model would say, maybe somebody's more handsome no, than me no, or no, somebody was stronger than me. No, you, we, but we're talking about determination, right. what keeps you going. When, when I hear these stories and I see what he did, it makes me go, and I'm complaining about flying first class somewhere and right. the show is late, you know, right. like these are, these are these situations that put me in tune with what's going on and what's, what I'm here for, the purpose of what I'm here for is for so, the people. So every day you got knocked down, you look at somebody else and say, you know what? They got knocked down too. And yeah, doing yeah, yeah. It's a purpose when I'm here and what I'm going through. This is just this is just gonna make my story sweeter or whatever. And you know, I, I just keep going because of the goal. The goal is to keep rocking and making people happy. Every four years, this a it's a new audience. That that number that that number four is something. We talking about you graduate in four years from school. You graduate pre presidents go through terms for four years. I like that. It's about the four years. It's every four years you almost get a new life. The way you you can you can do it all over again. So you, you do as much as you can in the four years. That four years up, you you can go back doing the same material if you want to. If you that kind of comic, you know. But it's 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 fulfilling those years while being the best, being the most original and funny, and making people laugh. And your reward is the feeling that you get. I think that's interesting because I've heard every four, every seven, or every ten, whatever the case is, right? And there's a lot of people that have businesses and or they're doing something and they feel that they only have four or five years and they don't think about the, the new cycle because I'll give you an example. In the clothing business, you know, a hot brand is four or five years. Mm -hmm. Then, then you know, things happen. Look at that. And, and the reason being is, let's say a kid was in college and he always or she always wore FUBU in college. Mm -hmm. When they get into the workforce and they got four years worth of FUBU in their closet and they're like, you know what, that was me when I was a kid, now I'm an adult. Yeah. Boom, they drop it, right? Yeah. And a lot of people in businesses, you look at it two ways. They either look at it, well, yeah, now I can reset mm -hmm. for the new crop or some people go, did I maximize the four years and I'm done? Yeah. Right. So, so I think that that is a powerful statement 
for people to realize, did they maximize the cycle, but yet the cycle is starting again in a different fashion? Exactly, yeah. right. exactly. And if you feel like you didn't maximize, there is a reset. And I think and now, that- now do it this time. Exactly. I, I love that, I love that. So, so that's, that's powerful, actually really powerful. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna use that one day and I'm not gonna Please give you do. credit for Please do, thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> the so, life of a comic. Exactly, right? <laughs> uh, if you're a CEO like I was, where I mastered my craft, but I know that I needed to master my personal brand, well then, you've come to the right guy. I love working with CEOs that are already game changers and just need to take it to the next level, but nobody out there has experienced what they have experienced and nobody out there can take them to where they want to go. Well, I can. And if you want to find out more about it, reach out. Go to workwithashark.com. And thanks for watching. And make sure you subscribe. Peace.